Hi guys, in this video, I'm going to teach you how to sculpt using subtools. We will go in depth with this workflow and achieve a female torso. I start off with the generic shape, the sphere. I begin to use the move brush. Unlike Z-spheres, where you can build up a mesh like a skeleton, subtool sculpting is different. You are altering the shape of a mesh to make it what you want it to be like. I use clay build up brush to build up the mesh's shape. I'm going to repeat saying this from the previous video. Clay build up brush is fantastic to build the foundation of the mesh. I use other brushes such as H polish, which was good for flattening the shoulder blade. Similarly, like the arm sculpt made with Z spheres, I mark the muscle groups using damn standard. Please look up anatomy and understand how muscles work. It will benefit you in the future when creating a character. Clay buildup is useful to form muscle groups. I use smooth a lot to get rid of lumpy areas. Dynamesh is used when I start to see less detail areas. Dynamesh helps increase the density of polygons in areas that has a few of them. The torso is a hard sculpt to do as it consists of a lot of muscle groups which can easily be done wrong. It's a good idea to get feedback from others and research the anatomy. I carry on repeating the process of using clay buildup, dam standard and smooth. Now this is the cool part which is sculpting part of the mesh with another subtool. It's handy to sculpt limbs with different subtools and combining them together after. In this case, sculpting limbs separately helps you visualize the anatomy. I then duplicate this separate subtool and mirror it. After it is mirrored, I merge it downwards and press X to enable symmetry so that I'm working simultaneously on each arm. For the neck, I insert a primitive cylinder shape and move it in place with the gizmo tool. The thigh was interesting to make. I started off with a primitive shape, the sphere. I then adjust it with the gizmo tool by changing the shape and size. The flatten modify was useful. It helped me achieve a sharp flat look on the bottom of the thigh. I then used the deformer soft modifier. After this, I cloned the thigh and merged it with the mirrored one. I made sure that symmetry was enabled so that both thighs were being worked on. Soon as I am happy with the torso, I combine everything and save a duplicate file. This allows me to go back to an older version if I mess up. Then Dynamesh is used to combine all the geometry together. I smooth out the jagged areas to make the mesh look good. I carry on developing the torso mesh with all the brushes that were mentioned in this video. Dam standard, flatten, clay buildup, and move. I repeat this process and keep looking at my reference. Be sure to always look at your references. You do not want to make something like this by eye. I keep focus of the muscle groups and build on it slowly. I use a handy trick to cut the arms. To do this, mask out the main torso area apart from the arm. I then switch to the gizmo tool and toggle to the transpose line, which can be activated by clicking on the gizmo icon. I then draw the transpose line in the area of the arm and have move selected. Then I click and drag from where the line was created and stop until I see a sharp flat area. In this part of the video, I will demonstrate using the decimated mesh as a reference to make a skirt. Then import the skirt into ZBrush and add detail to it. Decimation triangulates the mesh all over and makes the topology look weird. This is normal as decimation still maintains the main shape of the mesh. Detail is still left on the mesh, so you do not need to worry. You can use the decimated mesh to gain normal map information from it onto a lower poly mesh. Now let's talk about decimation. This is a feature on ZBrush Core that allows you to reduce the poly count of meshes. You may ask yourself why you would want to do this. The reason why you would want to use decimation is so that you can import the model into another 3D modeling program other than ZBrush and prevent it from lagging. The decimated model can be used as a reference to model items on top of the sculpture. To start the decimation process, make a duplicated subtool. You don't want to decimate the original subtool as you still may want to add detail to it after. Rename the subtool so you don't get confused on what you are decimating. Then click on the ZBrush window and click on decimation. Before you click on decimation, you have options on how many polys you can reduce on a mesh. 
Click on 250k as this is the maximum one and most likely to give you the best results. To export the decimated mesh, click on the export button. Now you can use the decimated mesh as a reference. I'm going to use it to help me make a skirt. This part of the video will be a time lapse of myself making the skirt. During the process of making the base mesh, I use 3ds Max. In 3ds Max, I use a lathe modifier and create a mesh from two spline shapes to make the base skirt shape. I use a twist modifier. This helps create a skirt-like shape. Then I import the skirt and work on adding detail to it. You can only import OBJ file formats from 3D modeling programs to ZBrush. This may occur to you when importing or exporting a mesh in ZBrush. The scale may be completely off. To fix this issue, simply go to the deformation tab and adjust the scale with the size slider until you are happy with the scale. I move around the skirt with the move tool and increase the subdivisions. I don't use DynaMesh as this will fill the big hole. I am now going to talk about the mesh extract function. You can use mesh extract to add depth to a mesh or use it to extract parts of a mesh into different subtools. To just add depth to a mesh, click accept underneath extract. To preview the thickness and see how thick the mesh will be, adjust the fix slider and click extract. However, do not click on accept after you clicked on extract unless you want it to be a separate subtool. I add detail to the skirt by using multiple brushes such as clay buildup and dam standard. I used pinch to get the sharp outer folds of the skirt. This gives it the look of a skirt. I also use the standard brush. This helps create defined creases. I used mess extract to make the top clothing item. During the process of creating the top clothing item, I carefully masked out the areas of the mesh. I masked out what I wanted to extract. When I extracted the top clothing item, it leaves lumpy parts. I used a smooth brush as much as I can to get rid of the jagged areas. I redynamized the subtool so that the top clothing item is easier to work with. I carry on using the smooth brush and move to form the shape of the clothing piece. When I am happy with how the clothing item is, I add fine detail to it by using Dam Standard. Dam Standard allows me to add details such as clothing seams and inner folds. It helps give the mesh more detail and makes it a believable piece of clothing. I carried on adding detail until the sculpture was completed. You can see that my subtools are displayed on the right. I can always go back to them whenever and add detail to them if necessary.